All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the video lecture series on graphing equations. So today we are going to be tying everything together from plotting points and using slope and putting it all together into graphing linear equations. So linear equations are actually come in three forms. So there are three forms of the equation of a line. One of them is called standard form. So standard form of a linear equation looks something like this ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are just some real numbers. But the key with standard form is that in standard form, x and y are both on the same side of the equal sign. Another form of the equation of a line is called slope-intercept form. So slope-intercept form is an equation. It's also known as in y-intercept form. That's another very common term. When it is written like this, y equals mx plus b. So y is equal to some number times x plus some number b. m and b are just some real numbers. Now, you might recognize the variable m from the last video with slope. The number m that is next to x is actually going to be the slope of the line. The b, the number that is added on the end with no variable, is actually going to be the y-intercept of the line. I will let you guys know that this form is the easiest to graph because you can see what the slope is already. The slope is just whatever number is next to x. And the y-intercept b is the number with no variable. So to identify if the equation is in standard form versus slope-intercept form, in standard form, x and y are on the same side. In slope-intercept form, y is by itself. So if y is by itself, it is in slope-intercept form. And we are going to favor this form the most when we are graphing lines because it is actually really easy to graph. And all of the shortcuts that I am going to show you are going to revolve around this form. Now, another form of the equation of a line, which we're going to use most often in section 7.4, which is writing the equation of a line, is called point-slope form. So point-slope form always has parentheses, and it looks something like this. y minus y1 equals m times parentheses x minus x1, where m, just like it was the last time, is the slope. So the slope is the number that's being multiplied by the parentheses. And this x1 comma y1 is any point on the line. It might be the y-intercept, but it doesn't have to be. x1 and y1 are the x and y coordinates of any point that is on that line. And the x that is here and the y that is here are just part of the equation, and they will always be there. Also, these two minus signs are part of the form of you know point-slope form, so those two minus signs are always going to be there regardless of what x1 and y1 are. So this is the one instance where a number does not take the sign to its left because that minus sign is part of a formula and actually doesn't affect what x1 and y1 are. So this does not mean that x1 is negative and this does not mean y1 is negative. Those minus signs are just part of a formula. Now if you want to change an equation from point slope form to slope intercept form, all you have to do is distribute that slope, m, and then add y1 to both sides to solve for y. Because remember, an equation is in slope-intercept form if y is by itself. So we're going to start with the easiest form to graph, which is graphing an equation that is in slope-intercept form. The shortcut to graphing this all revolves around slope being rise over run. And remember, the y's rise. So slope is equal to the amount of change in the y-coordinates divided by the amount of change in the x-coordinates. Also, remember that the y-intercept is always a point that is sitting on the y-axis. Any point that is sitting on the y-axis will have an x-coordinate of 0. So the y-intercept is always going to have coordinates 0, comma, whatever your b was. So we're actually going to graph this equation using its slope and its y-intercept. And I'm going to get the negatives out of the way right now. Whenever you have a, no a negative in front of your x term here, 
do yourself a huge favor and put that negative sign with the numerator. You're going to see why in a second. So let's first check, is y by itself? Yes, y is by itself on this side of the equal sign. So that means that this equation is in slope-intercept form. So that means that the number that is next to x here, that is your slope. So your slope is negative 2 over 3. The b is right here. Notice how I circled the sign to its left. So your b is negative 2, so your y-intercept is going to be, sorry, negative, uh, positive 2. Now, your y-intercept is always going to be 0, comma, b. Since b was positive 2, your y-intercept is 0, comma, 2. Remember, you only need two points in order to make an equation, uh, make a graph of a line. Any two points, you will be able to draw a line between them. So really, all you need to graph these lines are two points, and here's one of them. So I'm going to graph 0, comma, 2 just right off the bat. Now, you need two points, so we're about halfway there. To get the other point, that is where we're going to use our slope here. Remember, slope is equal to rise over run. Now, just for the sake of consistency, because you always read graphs from left to right, we are going to keep the run as a movement to the right. Now, rise could also be fall if you have a negative slope. So the reason why I put that negative with the numerator is because that negative is going to determine if we move up or down. So the rise, since the top number is a negative 2, is actually going to be a fall. So to get the second point, what I'm going to do is I am going to count down two units because the top number, the rise, is a negative 2. And then I am going to move to the right the bottom number, three units. So the top number tells you how many units to count up or down. The bottom number tells you how many units to count to the right. We're going to keep the run moving to the right. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go from this point that I just graphed here, and I'm going to count up to, sorry, down two units and to the right three units. Do not draw another point until you have moved both down and right. So I'm going to count down two units, and then to the right, one, two, three units. Once you have counted both down and to the right, you get to draw a point, and then that's your second point. Now, technically, you only need two, but I'm going to show you a third one just in case you missed that or want to see it again. So you go from your point. We're going to count down one, two units. And then we're going to count to the right, one, two, three. After you move both down and to the right, you're going to draw your point. And then you can form a line between these. Remember, lines technically go on forever, so you do need arrows on both ends. So we're going to do that same thing for this next one. So for y equals 3x minus 5, what form is it in? Well, y is by itself, so this is in slope-intercept form. Because it is in slope-intercept form, that means that we can identify the slope and the y-intercept right off the bat. So the slope is the number that is next to x, so your slope is going to be 3. Your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, b, where b is the number that it has no variable. And remember that a number always takes the sign to its left. So since there is a minus sign next to that 5, our b is actually negative 5. So your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 5. So we have one point already, and we only need two, so let's draw the point that we have. So 0, negative 5 is down here. Then to get my second point, that's where I'm going to use the slope. Now remember, slope should always be a fraction. The top number is the amount of rise or fall, and the bottom number is the run. 3 is a whole number and not a fraction right now, so you can instantly turn this whole number into a fraction by putting it over 1. Now the top number, whether that is positive or negative, will determine whether you count up or down. Since this was a positive 3x, that means we are going to be counting up three units. And remember the bottom number, we're going to keep the bottom number to the right, so we're going to move to the right one unit.
So remember, in slope, the numerator tells you how far to count up or down. The denominator tells you how far to count to the right. So to get my second point, I'm going to count up three units and to the right one unit. Do not draw another point until you have moved both up and to the right. So I'm going to go from my y-intercept over here. I'm going to count up one, two, three units, and I'm going to count to the right one. Now that I've moved both right and up, I'm going to draw my point. Technically, this is good enough, but I'm going to show you another one just in case you want to see that again. So I'm going to count up one, two, three units, and to the right one unit, and then I'm going to draw my point. Then I'm going to connect these with as straight a line as I can manage and draw arrows on both ends. So then for this next one, what form is it in? Well, since y is by itself, this is in slope-intercept form. And this one's going to be a little bit different. So remember, if you see a negative in front like this, do yourself a huge favor and put that negative number with the numerator. So I'm going to write this as negative 3 over 2x. Now let's start with slope. Slope is the number that is next to x, so your slope is going to be negative 3 halves. B is the number with no variable. Now since there is no number with no variable, there is technically a plus 0 over here. So 0 is technically your B. So your y-intercept, which is always 0 comma b, in this case, since b is 0, your y-intercept is going to be 0, 0, the origin. So that is the point where I'm going to start. Now to get the other point, I'm going to use slope. Now since this top number was negative, I'm going to count down 3 units. And remember, the run should always move to the right, so the bottom number is 2, so I'm going to count to the right 2 units. Do not draw another point until you have moved both down 3 units and to the right 2 units. So I'm going to go from my origin here, I'm going to count down 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1, 2. If you want another point, you just go from here, count down 1, 2, 3, and to the right 1, 2. Then you're going to draw your line between them with arrows on both ends, and that is your graph. So then we're going to do the same thing for this next one. Remember, if you want to attempt any of these problems at any point, just pause the video and resume when you are finished. So since y is by itself, that means that this equation is in slope-intercept form. That means the number next to x is going to be your slope, so your slope m is 1 half. The number with the sign to its left that does not have a variable is your y-intercept b, so b is negative 1. So your slope is going to be 1 half. And remember your y-intercept, your y-intercept is always going to be 0 comma b. Since b is negative 1, your y-intercept is going to be 0, negative 1. So I'm going to plot the point 0, negative 1 first. Then to get my second point, I'm going to use the slope. Since this was a positive 1 half and the top number is positive, that is going to be a movement up, so I'm going to count up 1 unit. And then the bottom number is 2, so I'm going to count to the right 2 units. So after you move both up 1 and to the right 2, you're going to draw your second point. So I'm going to count up 1 unit and to the right 1, 2. And you know, that's good enough, but just for... To show you again, I'm going to count up one unit and to the right two units. So then for this next one, you can see that y is by itself, so that means that this is in slope-intercept form. Since this is in slope-intercept form, the number next to x is your slope, so your slope m is 3. And the number with no variable is your y-intercept b, so b is negative 2. So your slope is 3. Your y-intercept, which is always the point we're going to start with, is going to be 0, b. 
Since B is negative 2, your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, negative 2. So we're going to start with the point 0, negative 2, which is right there. And to get my second point, I'm going to use my slope. Now, since my slope was a whole number, I'm going to turn it into a fraction by putting it over 1. Since that was a positive 3x, that means we are going to be moving up 3 units. And then the bottom number tells us to move to the right 1 unit. So you're going to go from your y-intercept. We are going to count up 1, 2, 3 units and to the right 1 unit. Up, one, two, three, and to the right, one. And that right there is your line. This next one is going to be very similar to the one we did a couple problems ago. So again, check to see if y is by itself. Y is by itself, so this means that this is in slope-intercept form. If it is in slope-intercept form, your slope is the number next to X, so your slope is 2. And your Y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, B, where B is the number with no variable. Now, there is no number with no variable, so if there's no B, if B is just missing, that means your B is 0. So if B is totally missing, your B is 0. So your Y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, 0. Now we're going to start at the origin at 0, comma, 0. That's one of our points. To get our second point, we're going to use the slope, and I'm going to turn this whole number 2 into a fraction by putting it over 1. Now since this was a positive 2, that means we're going to move up 2 units, and then the bottom number, we're going to move to the right 1 unit. So you're going to go from that point that you just drew from your y-intercept. We're going to count up one, two units, and we're going to count to the right one. And then you're going to draw your point after you've moved both up and to the right. So we're going to move up one, two, and to the right one. And then there is your line. Now, obviously, graphing equations that are in slope-intercept form are really easy because you, you saw how quick those were. When you're graphing an equation that is in standard form where y is not by itself, that is going to involve a little work before you graph. So before you graph anything, you have to solve the literal equation for y. You must get y by itself first. When you get y by itself, what this will do is rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form. Once it is written in slope-intercept form, then you can graph it using the methods that I just showed you, but the key is y needs to be by itself in order for you to do any of this with the slope and the y-intercept. So if your equation is in standard form, you must solve for y first. So for this equation, 2x plus 3y equals 6. What form is it in? Well, you can see that x and y are both on the same side of the equal sign, so this is in standard form. Because it is in standard form, we have to, before we touch, we're not going to touch this graph at all yet. Before we even touch that graph, we need to rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form, which means that we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to take 2x plus 3y equals 6, and I'm going to work on getting y by itself. So I'm going to undo this adding a positive 2x by subtracting 2x from both sides. So I get 3y equals, now while 6 minus 2x is not wrong, you guys are used to seeing y equals mx plus b, so you really should write this minus 2x first just to keep it consistent. And then since that 6 is positive, you're going to separate them with a plus 6. Then you're going to divide each of these terms one at a time by 3. And remember, you want to leave any fractions as fractions. So this negative 2x over 3, leave it as negative 2 over 3x. Then plus 6 divided by 3 is 2. 
So now that y is by itself, now it is in slope-intercept form, and now we can identify the slope, m, and the y-intercept. So the slope is going to be the number next to x, so the number next to x now is negative 2 thirds. So m is equal to negative 2 over 3. Your y-intercept is going to involve the number with no variable, so this positive 2 here is your b. So your y-intercept is 0, comma b, or 0, comma 2. So I'm going to start by graphing 0, comma 2, right there. And then to get my second point, I'm going to use the slope. Now since this was a negative 2 thirds, that means we are going to be counting down two units. And then remember, we're going to keep the run to the right, so we're going to count down two units and to the right three units. Do not draw your second point until you have gone both down and to the right. So I'm going to go from here, and from my y-intercept, and I'm going to count down one, two units, and to the right, one, two, three. Count down one, two units, and to the right, one, two, three. And then there, ignore that little glitch there. I'm sorry that happened. That's, this is not supposed to be there. Let's just ignore that. That right there is your actual line. So then for this next one, what form is it in? Well, if you take a look at 2x plus y equals 3, you can see that x and y are on the same side of the equal sign. When x and y are on the same side of the equal sign, this is in standard form. So because it is in standard form, you must do some rewriting. You have to rewrite the equation in slope-intercept form. So to do that, I'm going to take my equation, 2x plus y equals 3, and I'm going to get y by itself. So I'm going to undo this adding a positive 2x by subtracting 2x from both sides. And because you want this in the form of y equals mx plus b, please put the x term first. So put that minus 2x first. And since that 3 was a positive 3, plus 3. We didn't need to divide by anything, so y is already by itself, which means that we can identify the slope and the y-intercept right away. So the slope is going to be the number next to x, so your slope m is negative 2 going to turn it into a fraction by putting it over 1. Your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma b, where b is the number with no variable. So your b is positive 3, and your y-intercept is going to be 0, comma 3. So start with your y-intercept. So I'm going to start by plotting 0, comma 3. And to get the other point, I'm going to count using my slope. So since this was a negative 2, I'm going to count down 2 units. And the bottom number is 1, so I'm going to count to the right 1. So I'm going to go from my y-intercept, I'm going to count down 1, 2 units, and to the right 1. Two points is technically enough, but let's just get a third just because. Let's count down 1, 2 units, and to the right 1 unit. And then that right there is your line. So then for this next one, we have 4x plus 6y equals 0. So to start off with what form is it in? x and y are on the same side of the equal sign, so this is in standard form. Since this is in standard form, you must rewrite the equation so that it is in slope-intercept form. So what we're going to do is we're going to take 4x plus 6y equals 0, and we're going to get y by itself. So since we're getting y by itself, we're going to undo this adding a positive 4x by subtracting 4x from both sides. So on the left, we get 6y equals 0 minus 4x is negative 4x. If you want to keep it consistent, you can put the plus 0 on the end. Your y-intercept is probably going to be 0. So then I'm going to undo this times 6 by dividing every single term on both sides by 6. And that will give me y equals... Now, you can technically leave it as negative 4 over 6. However, 
counting down four units into the right six units is a little annoying. So I am going to reduce this fraction. Two goes into both four and six. So I'm going to reduce that to negative two thirds x plus zero divided by six is zero. So now that y, now that y is by itself, now I can identify the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope is going to be the number next to x. So your slope is going to be negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 over 3. Your y-intercept is going to be 0 comma b, where b is the number with no variable. And since there was that 0 there, that 0 is your b. So your y-intercept is 0 comma 0. So I'm going to start with 0, 0. And to get my other point, I'm going to use my slope, negative 2 over 3. So since the top number is negative, we're going to count down two units. The bottom number is 3, so I'm going to count to the right three units. Do not draw another point until you have counted both down and to the right. So I'm going to count down one, two units, and to the right, one, two, three. And then that right there is good enough for your line. So we're going to do that same thing for this next one. Remember, before you do any graphing, you should check to see is y by itself. And you can see that no, y is not by, by itself. x and y are on the same side of the equal sign. So we're going to need to rewrite this in slope-intercept form first before we do any graphing. So I'm going to start by getting rid of this plus x by subtracting x from both sides. That gives me 2y equals negative x plus 6. Remember that 6 is positive, so plus 6. Then I'm going to divide each individual term one at a time by 2, giving me y equals, remember there is a hidden 1 right there. So this fraction is actually negative 1 half x plus 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now that y is by itself, now we're going to identify the slope and the y-intercept. So the slope, m, is the number next to x. So your slope is negative 1 half. Your y-intercept is 0 comma b, where b is the number with no variable. So your b is 3. So your y-intercept is 0 comma 3. So I'm going to start with my y-intercept. I'm going to start at 0 comma 3. Then to get my second point, I'm going to use my slope. Since that top number is negative, I'm going to count down one unit. Bottom number is 2, so I'm going to count to the right two units. So I'm going to go from my y-intercept. I'm going to count down 1 and then to the right 1, 2. Count down 1 and to the right 1, 2. And then I'm going to draw a line between these, and that is going to be my final graph. Now, horizontal and vertical lines are graphed much differently, and they have equations that look very different than the ones that you just saw in the rest of this video. So for y equals 9, you might notice in this equation here, there is no x. x is just missing entirely which means that the y-intercept is 9, and more than that, the y-coordinate of every single point on this line is equal to 9. So this right here is actually a horizontal line. In a horizontal line's equation, x is missing entirely, and it's just y equals a number. Now for this next one, x equals negative 5, you might notice that y is missing entirely. So what this means is that every single point has an x-coordinate of negative 5. So your line, is the best I can do, is going to look something like this. This is a vertical line.
In a vertical line's equation, y is missing entirely, and it's just x equals a number. So a horizontal line has equation of the form y equals some number a, and horizontal lines always have a slope of 0. So horizontal lines always have equation y equals some number. A vertical line has the equation of the form x equals some number a and has an undefined slope. We learned that in the last video on slope. So the equation of a vertical line is x equals some number. Now, we've pretty much covered all of the how-tos with actual graphing. What we're going to do for the rest of this video is we're going to talk about a couple other important features of the graphs. So a couple of very important features of the graphs are what are called x and y intercepts. So the x-intercept of a graph is the point where the graph touches or crosses the x-axis. A point that is sitting on the x-axis always has a y-coordinate of 0. So x-intercepts will always have a point x, 0. So you find an x-intercept by substituting 0 in for y in your equation and solving it for x. Now a y-intercept, as we saw, is the point where the graph touches or crosses the y-axis. And yes, you can find it by putting the equation in slope-intercept form. However, you need to remember that a y-intercept always has an x-coordinate of 0. So y-intercepts always have a coordinate 0, comma, something. Another way that you can find the y-intercept is by substituting 0 in for x in your equation and solving for y. So another method that you can use to graph an equation of the line is using its x and y intercepts because all you need to graph a line are two points. So if you find the x-intercept and the y-intercept and you plot them as points, you can draw a line between them. So graphing using intercepts is a legitimate method of graphing a line. So we're going to take this equation, 2x plus 3y equals 6, and we're going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, and we're going to write them as ordered pairs. And then while we're at it, we're just going to graph as we go. So let's start with the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we are going to substitute 0 in for y, and we're going to solve for x. So we have 2x plus 3 times in place of y, I'm going to substitute 0 equals 6. Well, 3 times 0 is 0, so you get 2x plus 0 equals 6. 2x plus 0 is just 2x, and then you're going to finish getting x by itself by dividing both sides by 2, and you get x equals 3. Now, you do need to write this as an ordered pair. An x-intercept is a point that sits on the x-axis. An x-intercept always has a coordinate x, 0. So we're going to write this as the ordered pair 3, 0. So let's actually graph that. 3, 0 is right there. Now let's find the y-intercept. So another way that you could find the y-intercept is to substitute 0 in for x and solve for y this time. So I'm going to substitute 0 in for x. So 2 times 0 plus 3y equals 6. And I'm going to solve for y. So 2 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 3y is 3y equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. And we get y equals 2. So remember, y-intercepts always have the coordinates 0, comma y, so 0, comma 2. So 0, comma 2 is right there, so let's plot it. And look, we have two points. Any two points determine a line, so I can draw the line between them. So graphing using intercepts, while it does take a while, is another method that you can use to graph a line. Now, when you have two different lines that are graphed together in the same coordinate plane, 
they're going to do one of two things. They're either going to cross each other and intersect, or they're not going to cross each other and not intersect. So you might remember from any geometry class that you've taken that two parallel lines never intersect. So parallel lines never intersect. They never cross each other. So what that means in terms of the lines that we've been graphing is that the y-coordinates and x-coordinates need to be increasing and decreasing at the same amount at the same time. So in terms of slope, if two non-vertical lines are parallel, then they have the same slope. So parallel lines are always going to have the same slope. Now, here's the thing with graphs, especially graphs that you draw by hand. It's not always going to be obvious just by looking at the graphs of two lines if they're parallel. In fact, don't assume two lines are parallel just because they look parallel from the graph. In order to determine without a shadow of a doubt if two lines are parallel, you have to find the slope between them using the slope formula. Slope formula, remember, is m equals y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. So don't just draw these lines and say, yeah, they look parallel, they're parallel. That would get you no credit because that is not an exact science. The only way to determine exactly if they're parallel or not parallel is to use slope. So we've got the points P, which is 0, 0, Q, negative 2, negative 5, R, 0, 5, and S, negative 2, 0. This notation right here means the line that passes between P and Q, so the line PQ. And this notation right here means the line RS, the line that passes through the points R and S. So we're going to use the slope formula to determine if these two lines are parallel. So let's start with the line PQ. So we've got the point P, which is 0, comma, 0. And we've got the point Q, which is negative 2, negative 5. So since 0, comma, 0 was the first point listed, I'm going to call that X1 and Y1. Since negative 2 and negative 5 were the second point listed, I'm going to call them x2 and y2. So we're going to plug these into the slope formula in for their appropriate spots. So your slope is equal to y2, negative 5, minus y1, which is 0, divided by x2, negative 2, minus x1, which is 0. And remember, you do want to leave your answer as a fraction, but you are going to want to simplify it. So negative 5 minus 0 is negative 5 over negative 2. And then a negative divided by a negative is a positive, so you can simplify that to a slope of positive 5 halves. So what we're going to do is we are going to find the slope of the line that passes through the points R and S. If this slope comes out to 5 halves, they're going to be parallel. If the slopes are not the same, they're not going to be parallel. So if the slope of RS is the same as the slope of PQ, the lines are going to be parallel. So we've got the point R, which is 0, comma, 5, and we have the point S, which is negative 2, comma, 0. So I'm going to call this first point listed X1 and Y1. I'm going to call the second point listed X2 and Y2. And then we're going to use the slope formula again to find the slope between these two points. So slope is going to equal y2, which is 0, minus y1, which is 5, divided by, remember, that minus sign is part of the formula, x2, which is negative 2, minus x1, which is 0. So 0 minus 5 is negative 5 over negative 2 minus 0 is negative 2. A negative divided by a negative is a positive, so your slope is positive 5 halves. So you can clearly see that these two slopes are exactly the same. Because they have the same slope, that means they are parallel. So yes. Line PQ is parallel to line RS because they have the same slope.
Now, if two lines are not parallel and they have different slopes, they're going to intersect each other and they are going to cross each other at some point. Now, if they intersect at a 90 degree angle or a right angle, they are what are called perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines intersect at a 90 degree angle or a right angle. You might remember, you know, you might remember this notation here at the little square if you took geometry. So a horizontal line and a vertical line are always perpendicular to each other. However, you can have two slanted lines also be perpendicular as long as they intersect at a right angle. So here's the actual definition of perpendicular lines, and then I'm going to give you a quick shortcut on how to just quickly look at two slopes and identify if they're perpendicular or not perpendicular. If two lines are perpendicular, then the product of their slopes is going to be equal to negative 1. Now, an alternative that you can use to figure out if two slopes are perpendicular or not perpendicular, well, in order to have a product be a negative, that means they need to have opposite signs. So one of the slopes needs to be a positive number, and one of them needs to be a negative number. In order to multiply to negative 1, that means that the two slopes must be reciprocals of each other. We learned that a long time ago, that a number times its reciprocal is always 1. So the slopes of two perpendicular lines are always opposite reciprocals of each other. Here's some examples of pairs of slopes that are perpendicular. So 3 fourths and negative 4 thirds. They are opposites. One is positive, one is negative, and when you multiply them together, you get negative 1. Here's another pair of slopes that are opposite reciprocals, negative 1 half and positive 2. Those two slopes would be perpendicular. Here's another example, positive 1 third and negative 3. Those would also be perpendicular to each other. Two perpendicular lines have slopes that are opposite reciprocals of each other. So we have graphed here two lines, the line that goes through AB and the line that goes through BC, and they obviously intersect at B. Okay, so they're obviously not parallel. What we're going to do is we are going to use slope to determine if these two lines are perpendicular to each other. Don't just assume they are from the graph. I mean, they look pretty perpendicular, but we don't know if this is a 90 degree angle here. So don't assume they're perpendicular just because they look perpendicular. You actually have to use the slope formula to find the slope between you know, each of these points and find the slope of each line. So there's that slope formula you got to memorize again. Let's find the slope of the lines one at a time. So let's start with the slope of the line that passes through AB. Well, A has coordinates 4, 4, and B has coordinates 2, 2. So I'm going to call this first point x1 and y1. And I'm going to call the second point x2 and y2. So I'm going to now find the slope between them. So the slope is going to be y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is 4, divided by x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is 4. Do the subtracting first. So we're going to have to do 2 minus 4, which is negative 2, over negative 2 which would give us a slope of 1. Now, in order for the other line to be perpendicular, the other line would need to have a slope that is an opposite reciprocal. The opposite reciprocal of 1 would be negative 1. So if the other line has a slope of negative 1, they are going to be perpendicular. If the other line has a slope of anything other than negative 1, they are not going to be perpendicular.
So let's find the slope of the line that passes through the points B and C. So we have B, which is 2, comma 2, and C, which is 4, comma negative 2.5. So the slope of, is going to be, uh, this first point is going to be x1 and y1. This second point is going to be x2 and y2. So the slope is going to be y2, negative 2.5, minus y1, which is 2, divided by x2, 4, minus x1, 2. So then negative 2.5 minus 2 is negative 4.5, over 4 minus 2 is 2, which does not equal negative 1. These two slopes are not opposite reciprocals. If you were to multiply them together, you know, 1 times negative 4.5 over 2, you would not get negative 1. So since the product of their slopes is not negative 1, and they are not opposite reciprocals, these two lines are not perpendicular. So. Don't assume that two lines are perpendicular. Even if their graph looks like they're perpendicular, the slopes need to be opposite reciprocals because if they're not, like we saw here, they are not perpendicular. So that wraps up section 7.3. So that wraps up graphing the equation of a line. So what we're going to be doing in the next video at, you know, for section 7.4 is we are going to be taking an already graphed line and we are going to be writing the equation that goes with it. So stay tuned for that and thank you all very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.